Hey, what's going on everybody? The altcoins are still getting some action here. We can see the meat coins definitely popped off. Um, Pepe up 50%, really nice to see. Um, and this is, this is sort of that rotation that I was talking about. I mean, uh, depending on which ones go first, right? So you have typically Bitcoin goes first, then sometimes you have the layer ones, the layer twos, and then you go meme coins, and then you go oracles, and then you go DeFi, then NFT, then maybe XRP payment coins at the end, right? I don't know. I have no idea the order it goes, but that's usually how things start to transpire. And another reason why people get massively wrong-footed is because they, they chase things that are already up, right? Um, so if you see, for example, uh, let's say you're an XLM and you say and you see Pepe up 50 percent, you sell your XLM to go chase whatever is left of that particular wave. Not to say that it's over, not even close, because I think alt season is upon us. Um, then, uh, you know, then once it's settled, right, then you see XLM go off and then you would have wish you would have stayed. Um, not saying that's anybody here listening, but I'm just that's a common mistake people make is chasing things rather than just staying planted. I want to talk about Q and T. Uh, we'll see how how much time we have, and we'll go through um, a couple different coins. But looking at Q and T, it, it's it was basically on the bull market support band. So this is a sort of an early a late bloomer right and that's what i'm looking for now i'm not looking for things like pepe that are already up 50 percent i'm looking not to say that pepe can't go even higher or doge or or shib or whatever those things can fly right but as me as an investor as a disciplined investor i'm looking for things that are late bloomers so for example if you look at theta look at where it was on the bull market support band you could see it was down here and that was for me the signal okay this is starting to get serious more dollar cost averaging right so now uh theta theta went up right great perfect i think it's going to consolidate continue to go up uh even maybe a pullback continue to go up whatever the case may be i still think plenty of upside um but before it can do that, you know, other coins that are still down here, like QNT, that are just barely now breaking above, those to me have, uh, you know, a little bit more potential, right? Not anymore, of course, because it already broke out, but as it was in this uh, near the bull market support band. So one of the things I was looking for with different coins is looking at which ones are near that level right and i actually tweeted out uh there's my x.com account i actually tweeted out right there qnt next now i didn't know it was going to happen next i was just raising the question is it going to occur next um and you know since that tweet uh i put out yesterday or I'm sorry, I think it was a little more uh, the day before yesterday. Uh, we can see now QNT has, uh, let's go to the daily chart. We can see a massive engulfing candle um, up 13%. And then by the time that was out, it was a right around this candle, I believe. So almost uh 15 20 percent there um so basically i didn't know it was going to happen that time right i'm just saying is q and t next why did i say that because you can see you know we had this pump to the upside right we broke above the bull market support band we did test it which is good right we had this little bull flag here we continued to work our way up but then we came back down to retest it, right? Uh, I think during this time, a lot of the other coins were getting more love than QNT. So 
maybe people you know selling off their QNT because that's what it's all about. It's it's people rotating their coins, right? It's a highly volatile emotional uh, machine, and people's money is flying around from this coin to that coin to this coin. You know, pe people who are, who are tired of holding QNT or or whatever coin it is, and it's not performing, and they see others perform. They rotate, right? So that causes the price to come back below the bull market support band. And then me as the disciplined sort of falcon, right? Like an eagle, I'm looking down and I'm like, there's my prey right there, right? I'm looking down seeing that that's my dinner time, right? And I come in and I swoop it down here, right? It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good because it's not euphoric. It's not impulsive it's not you know flying to the upside and, and it's surely not you know in, in in the talks of other people's conversations because they're talking about things that are going up not things that are going sideways so you don't want to now this is not financial advice but for me i look for things that are going sideways as opposed of going higher now, if you catch it right as it's breaking out, that's a little different. But you got to be cautious. Is it a fake out? But in this environment, it looks like it's a legitimate breakout, right? So we did break out of this little range in here, right? And that's just one small step, one small step, right? So if I zoom out now, let's go to the three day chart. You can see now we're in a much bigger range and QNT is so much different than the rest. And another reason I really like QNT, I'm going to tell you that reason. And that reason I'm about to tell you is the most important reason why I like QNT where it's at. Very, very, very important. You're not going to want to miss that reason. I'm going to explain that soon. Um, but look at this. We are in another range here. Uh, right about there and let me turn that back to yellow okay so coming back out here right we're in this range and we broke above the bull market support band we came down to back test the bull market support band just like theta did right just like uh, a lot of coins right uh, let's see file coin look at file coin same thing right so look at filecoin so ask yourself this question which would what what would i rather buy right would i rather buy filecoin that broke this high that's way up here that already went above its bull market support band would i rather buy hbar that broke this high and it back tested its bull market support band and it went all the way up so let's see where is it at it is approximately um, it is approximately 68% above its bull market support band. Okay, fair enough. And look at XRP. It's barely getting above its, its bull market support, but that makes me interested, right? Because look, XRP did not break this high, not even getting, barely getting above the bull market support band. Meanwhile, Filecoin, Theta, H bar and many, many, many others, to name a few, are already up there. Not to say that I'm selling theta and I'm wrote, you know, for me, it's all about being diverse because, again, this might be able, this might uh, XRP or QNT might stay down here for a while while theta and H bar continue pumping massively to the upside. That could totally happen. That's why, for me, it's, you know, di diversification. Uh, a lot of people think having 50 altcoins is diverse. That's not diverse. Um, that's just spreading yourself thin. For me, uh, um, diverse is having probably between five and eight strong uh, competitors, right? So anything more than 15, uh, you know, to each his own, but I think it's a little bit too hard to manage and too, too much. Because you don't need every altcoin to be wealthy. You just need a select few, right? Because at the end of the day, they all pretty much give us beautiful uh, percentage gains. But it's about staying planted in those, right? 
So anyway, I digress. We go back to uh, like, for example, uh, Filecoin just real quick. You could see here's the bull market support band. It had this base right here. And then, bam, it broke out and it broke this top. So if I go to Q&T, well, look what we have here. Look what we have here. We have a base right here. And we have this high right here. So we barely broke above the, the base. So now we want to see a little consolidation and then a continuation, right? Because what is Q&T doing? It's playing catch up to the other coins, right? It's playing catch up to the other coins. So once we get, once Q and T gets back over here, then it would have matched up to what Theta is, what Filecoin is. But that's the reason why I picked up some Q and T because number one, it was at the bull market support band. Number two, it was developing a base. Number three, it was retesting the bull market support band. Number four, it didn't break this high, right? I mean, I can go on and on and on. So now that I made my case, look what happened. We got a big fat green candle. And what do we call that? One, two, three. Does anybody know what we call three big candles like that in a row upon a breakout? It's called three white soldiers. Go to Google, type in candlestick pattern, three white soldiers. I don't know why they call that. Call it three white soldiers. I think it should be called three green soldiers, but hey, whatever. So, um, uh, Maybe if I do this, here, let me do this. Watch this, chart type, and I'm gonna type hollow candles. There we go. So now all the candles are hollow, and I don't like that at all, so I have to change it back, because I'm sorry, it's just not my thing. Uh, let's. I, I, sometimes I like to dabble with Heikinashi a little bit. Let's see what the Heikinashi looks like here. So it's a little bit more unison, right? So. Anyway, let, let's let's get on with the analysis. What do we see here happening with Q and T? Something very very interesting to me. Can anybody see it? We have a massive base. We have a massive base down in here. Let me. Uh, there we go. We have a huge base, right? And 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 this thing's been going sideways. For a long time and that is part of the reason why i'm very very bullish on it and i still haven't gave you that that reason yet maybe some of you guys know that number one reason why i think q and t is very bullish um and i'm gonna get there soon but check this out we have a big left shoulder we have a massive head right and now look what's happening right this is another reason why i entered uh, I think three or four days ago, right? Right when we were back down here and uh, tweeted out uh, yesterday or two days ago. Um, I should have made a video about it. I didn't get there. But at the end of the day, I think it's still a, a, in a very good uh, zone for me. Um, but anyway, I want to see this shoulder head and then continue to develop that right shoulder. So once we get up here, right, then this is where the big, big granddaddy uh, breakout will occur, right? So we're still not even there yet. I mean, we're still what? We're still approximately, uh, say, 30% away. We're about 30% away from that big, big breakout, right, that, we, that we've been wanting. And then not only that, but that's not even talking about the all-time high. So in order to sort of put this in perspective, I'm going to actually compare this to let's come a lot of charts look like uh, Filecoin theta where they have that Wyckoff accumulation and then they break out very, very bullish looking chart theta, extremely bullish looking chart. So I'm going to compare it to uh, something like theta. Now, this is on log scale. Let me put it on regular here. So the, the, the good thing about Theta is look how much lower it is. It's way down here, right? And then Q and T is much more higher up. But there's a reason why, and I'm going to get into that. So another reason also is you could see Theta, right, broke above its range, right? So if I put it on this high here, I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to put it right here on the close. 
So that's still way up here at $189, right? Now, both of them look incredibly bullish. All I'm saying here is Q&T has more uh, sort of wiggle room to get back to this point. You can see Theta already crossed its point. Now, to Theta's credit, right, it is much lower on the scale here, right? So if you look at where this candle is compared to this candle, it's still QNT is much higher than that. And the reason why is because of this thing right here, which is the retracement. So now let me show you this. Let me get rid of that. Let me go back to log scale. Now check this out. I'm going to get rid of all that. But first, before I do that, let's do this real quick. Uh, let's do the measured move right here. So I'm going to measure from the head up to the shoulder. And then I'm going to put that right there. Right? I'm going to put that right there. Uh, let's get it right on, the, right on that area right there. So in the vicinity of approximately $280. So we'll say 280. Okay. So that's sort of the measured move of this inverse head and shoulders. So what percentage yield is that? That's what we got to figure out. So if I go all the way up, that's approximately a hundred and say 30%. So a hundred and well, I like to round it down if it's higher or lower, or I round it up. So I'll say 130. Now let's do the same thing um, with uh let's see here let's do it with maybe ada let's try it with ada so ada doesn't really have a clear uh inverse head and shoulders i mean i guess you can do it like this right where it's sort of an an uprising where then you know that's very bullish right so you have something like that right and then from where it is there just ballpark i'm sure it's gonna be uh, about almost 200 percent so not bad uh let's see let's try it with theta just trying to give you guys an idea you know the, the sort of the my thought process on how i determine what coins i want to rotate what coins i want to uh add and then also what coins I want, I'm looking to buy, right? And this has nothing to do with my HODL position. So I want to make that very clear. When I'm talking about Theta and all these others, this has nothing to do with my HODL position, right? Because I have multiple positions. Like, for example, uh, I might have a, a daily trade. I might have a swing trade. And then I have my HODL position. So as you know, or I haven't said this in a while, but 90% of what I do is hold. 90% is holding. The 10% is trading. So that's where I get a, a little frisky risky, right? And uh, I, I start entering trades. Some of them are short term, some of them are long term. In this case, I am trading the retracement level of for example, uh, I entered a trade on the bull market support band and my exit on that short term trade, or actually it's not too short term, but it's just basically getting back to the 50%, which is about $8, right? So between six and eight dollars would be sort of my first take profit. Now that could totally change. It really depends on how it looks going up right um and then more importantly how does it look when it gets back over here into this zone because that's sort of um this is sort of a take profit zone as well um i haven't taken any profit on my theta trade fyi uh not financial advice that doesn't mean you should or shouldn't just uh simply saying how i'm how i'm doing it right so now that being said, let's do a measured move real quick for this. I think it was, uh, let me go right about there. And let me take this off Heiken Ashi because I get better readings when I'm on the chart here. Uh, where are we at? Candles. There we go. I'm going to put it right about there. So 
I'll measure it from the head up to right about there and I'll put it right about there so where does that get me about three dollars and sixty two cents there about so where is that from where we are so not measuring it from here but we're, we're currently at one dollar ninety five cents which means we have we have approximately 85 90% more to go to hit that measured move. That's important to keep in mind when you're trading. When you're hodling, you don't care. It doesn't matter because we're we're hodling for the for the for the bigger swing, for the bigger cycle, for the future. But when you're sort of swing trading, short-term trading, you kind of want to know you know where you are in that percentage move, right? Because for example, if now if I go back to QNT, First of all, we haven't even broken out of the inverse head and shoulders, let alone get to the measured move, right? So remember, theta was at what, 80? We'll say 90%. Give it the benefit of the doubt. We'll say 90%. Um, so to get to 90%, that would be about there. So let's get to the measured move. So it's not that much of a difference, about 120%. Uh, based off 90%. Now, obviously it is, you know, about a 30% difference, you know, it's pretty, pretty nice. But is that 30%? Now you got to ask yourself, is that 30% worth it for me risking to swap into something like QNT? The answer for me would be no, it's not worth it. Now, if we're talking two, three, four, 500%, then maybe, right? But if it's only 30%, why even bother? There's no sense of creating the anxiety of having to liquidate your position then transfer it over to another coin. And then, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense, right? But that's why I didn't buy it where we are. I bought it down here. But still, did I trade anything to buy it? No, I just added to uh, my position. I didn't sell anything to add it, right? That's that's not usually what I do. The only the only way I would sort of uh, sell a coin into another coin is if that said coin number one reached a target, number two had a massive breakout, or number three the percentages were just crazy, right? Then then I would you know sort of take profit off of that and then rotate that profit into a coin that, for example, is barely right here, right? All right, so you know, let's. I'm trying to do the TA, but also sh sh kind of do something different, where I'm explaining sort of the the, the mindset and, and how I go about looking at things from a trading perspective, right? From a trading perspective. Okay, so there we go. We got QNT here, um, looking very interesting. That doesn't mean it's going to happen today or tomorrow, right? It, it, but but you know for me it, it looks like it's getting geared up for a pretty nice breakout so and then real quick before i go on there's another thing i do number one is figure out where it is on the fibonacci scale so i mean we haven't even hit the 382 right so what i'll do here is i'll take a measurement right and i'll measure it from here all the way up to about the 382 which is about 50%, right? So if I go back to theta and I put the, the, the Fibonacci on, right? Let's put the Fibonacci on. And now I'm gonna measure it to the 382 from where it currently is, right? I'm gonna measure it from where it is. That is, look at this. That is a, over, that's 225% away from the 382. That's a big difference, right? So, you know, yes, uh, the measured move is a little uh, is 30% less, but if you look at the bigger picture and you zoom out, the 382 is still 220, 230% away versus what 50%. So you know there's different metrics you got to know, right? So then what I like to do also is measure it from the all-time high. So here's QNT, right? And I'm going to measure it from where it is now all the way up to the all time high, which is about 236%. That's not a lot, right? So if I go to theta and I measure it from where it is now to all the way up to the all time high, 
that's 715, 720%. That's a big difference. That's a big, big difference, right? Um, so, you know, that's a, you know, big difference. So, okay, so now let's see. And then if I measured it right where Q and T is, um, so the bull market support band for theta was around, uh, say 90 cents to a dollar. Um, and then it broke out. So right about there, all the way up to its all time high, you're talking 1200%, right? So, you know, versus a QNT, which is nothing. So, but then, but, but, but you say, well, wait a minute, Crypto Brandon, you said that you like QNT. You said it's really bullish. Um, and that's true. And I did. And the reason why um, it, it might not be as bullish as Theta, but from, uh, from a structure perspective, I want to show you this. What what is my main thing? Five phases of the market, right? So we have a rise, we have a crash, we have a retrace, we have reaccumulation, right? And we have sideways. That, my friends, is a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, blast off. Now that doesn't mean theta isn't going to blast off either. But what I like about QNT is not um, the fact that it's competing with other coins that I hold because we're all, uh, you know, an army, right? So let's say you have 10 coins. Um, yes, in essence, those 10 coins are competing with each other for your, um, for your value and what their output is, right? So every coin has an output right? One might be a thousand percent. Another one might be 800 percent. So they all have their quirks and features about, you know, their, their, their bullishness, their concerns and everything like that. So you have to sort of weigh out which are good, which are bad and sort of make a decision. And that's where I'm saying diversification is key. You know, you don't want to be totally saturated in one coin, even though that might be a really good decision, but from a risk perspective, from a trading perspective, and even from a hodling perspective, you, you sort of want to be, uh, you know, diverse, but you guys already know that. So the reason why I like this is because of a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, breakout. And then another reason, and that's sort of, that's my main reason, right, is because of that structure here which drastically increases the probability of us breaking out into a new all-time high. So then when I pull the Fibonacci on that, and I say, okay, if this is going to go to a new all-time high, we'll just start with this the 1618, right? We'll start with the 1618. So now I'll measure it from here to the 1618, and that, my friends, is approximately about 400 and 20 percent so it's not too bad it's not great but it's not too bad now when i compare it to something like theta and by the way i'm not comparing it to say which one is better which one's worse because i own both i think theta is better i think theta is going to give us much more yield um but the reason why i'm doing this is is not to say hey one's better than the other i'm doing this basically to show you the thought process of how I go about it. And that's just scratching the surface, right? Because I really want to get the information out. But I also kind of want to show how I think about things um, in case you were wondering. So, so for example, Theta is at $1.97, right? So Theta didn't have a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation sideways, right? So think about that. So think about QNT being right here, right, right around, um, you know, this, uh, let's see, what is that? $4 to $2.30, right? So imagine, you know, that's where, Q, that's where, if theta was the QNT chart, that's where it would be, right? Rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, right around there, right? Versus theta being here. So from a technical perspective, you can say, from a risk adjusted perspective, 
you can say that, well, theta has to go up into a retracement, then it has to come down, then it has to reaccumulate. Well, wait a minute, Q and T is already there. So why would I bother, right? And that's sort of the thing you have to think about. Now, that doesn't mean anything, right? Because if Bitcoin breaks out into a new all-time high, which is very possible, and even likely at that point, because it's already broken above the 786, we really want to see, uh, by the way, the monthly candle did not close a brand new monthly all-time high uh, on the close, but it's still really, really bullish. We'll see how the week ends. But um, yeah, so for for QNT, it would be here, right, in this zone between uh, $2.30 up to $4, say, right? So for theta, um, we have a measured move, right? Let's say the measure, let, let's say it had to do that, right? Where it had to go rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation. Well, if that's the case, then that means it's not going to break out into a new all-time high, right? Not just quite yet. So we know QNT is 420% away from the 1618. So if I go from here all the way to the 1.618, you're talking uh, almost 1200%. That's a huge difference. But here's the thing. Um, QNT is already in reaccumulation. That doesn't mean um, theta has to do that as well, right? But I'm just kind of giving an example of some tools that I use for the future. So let's say theta went up for fun. Let's say theta went up 420%. Where would that take us? That would take us to about uh, between the 618 and the 702 of 10, between $10 and $11 and 30 cents. I need, uh, you know, for people that are listening in the car or listening, you know, from afar that are not necessarily watching the video, I'm trying to do a better job at calling out the number and instead of saying, um, yeah, in this area over here or over here, because if you're listening, you don't know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, so it's it's I'm trying to do a better job. So if I forget, um, just know that I'm I'm making an effort to do that, trying to break that habit. So and I appreciate the feedback too, because sometimes I do uh, listen in the car um, when I when I have to. But be safe, because sometimes people, you know, you know what I mean. People are crazy drivers, especially in California. They just um it's interesting my brother he's uh in idaho you know he, he's used to the idaho stuff right and the traffic he comes down here and he's like paralyzed and it's like well you know because he's not used to five lanes bumper to bumper uh motorcycles going in and out you know on ramps and you know all these crazy the freeway systems so uh and then like you know when you're born in uh, uh, um, a populated area, you're sort of used to it. But then again, like when you have somebody from California driving in the Idaho, then it's kind of funny that because they make fun of us and then we make fun of them. But at the end of the day, we're all we're all crazy drivers. It don't matter where you go, especially uh, well, India. If you've ever been to India, they in, in areas like that. They don't go by stoplights and and traffic things. I mean, they they just that is crazy. I, I've never been there myself, but I've seen um, videos about it, and I'm like, wow. It's like you can see like a scooter um, towing a goat with two chickens on it. You know, <laughs> just like just the the quirkiest things you'd ever see. And then like also going in and out of traffic, just crazy things. But uh, anyway, so um, I'm bullish on the whole market when it comes to the whole market. Now, for me, the biggest question is, does Bitcoin break out into a new all time high? And if it does not, then how long does it take until it does that? And then also, what happens to the altcoins if Bitcoin starts to go into distribution 
and then eventually reaccumulation. Well, my whole thought process is I believe coins that are still at the bottom of their bases, right, like Theta and many others, still have po plenty of uh, potential upside to go. So, for example, um, looking at Theta here, if we get back into um, sort of this retracement area or somewhere in this area uh, between uh, 4 and $10 thereabouts. I know it's a big area, but it is a big range, right? And we get up here, and now we're playing in here. And then if Bitcoin at that moment is broken out into a new all-time high, then I'm convinced that we might have a little, you know, correction, pullback, whatever, but eventually theta also breaks out into a new all-time high. If theta gets back into the retracement level and Bitcoin has not yet broken out into a new all-time high, then we'll have to evaluate the scene and say, okay, well, what is Bitcoin doing? Is it going sideways into distribution? So let me put up Bitcoin now. So for example, um, you know, because a lot of people are convinced it's going to break out into a new all-time high. That could, and it could totally happen. But also, I've, I've already looked at Bitcoin. You can see, right, you can see one, two, three, four, five. So you're at that fifth wave, right? So you got to be a little cautious here. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't have, you know, an A, B, C, right? And maybe meet up with the bull market support band, then continue breaking out. That would be like the, that would be a perfect situation. Because number one, you get a pullback. It cools off the oscillators and everything like that. It resets the RSI. Number two, you get to backtest or hopefully retest the bull market support band, which we haven't done in quite some time. So that would be needed. I think that would be more beneficial for Bitcoin to backtest the bull market support band before breaking out into a new all-time high. That way, if it does get this test where this band comes down and we we get this test here then it sort of adds more confluence conviction confidence and uh basically more energy in the momentum as we break out right so during this time if we get this sort of correction uh or even a sideways base like uh down here uh where bitcoin was at between 25 and 31 then, um, it, you know, what would happen to the alts? And I still think as long as Bitcoin is above the bull market support band, altcoins remain bullish, right? So you, there's a lot of things to look forward to. Number one, right, Bitcoin got through all the retracement levels. It's battling the all-time high. Number two, Bitcoin is far away from the bull market support band. Number three, Altcoins are starting to break out of their range, right? But eventually, what when Bitcoin pulls back, what do you think the alts are going to do? They're also going to pull back. But here's the thing. When Bitcoin comes back up, right? Because if it does correct, right? If it comes down and then it bounces back up, that bounce back up is going to really be more beneficial, in my opinion, to the altcoins than anything else, right? So let's put on Theta. Uh, let's compare. Let's see where's Theta at right there. And then we can do, uh, let's say, Q and T. Just because they're so different looking, right? Um, yeah, we'll do this right here. Okay. And there we go. So... We have, obviously, uh, this is Bitcoin up here. And then the middle one right here is Q and T. And on the bottom is Theta, right? Which is actually good for Theta because it has more potential upside than any of the other ones, right? So, all right, let me take all that off the screen and just start real quick from here. Okay, uh, going back over here 
right? You can see, um, right, the Bitcoin um, rocking it to the upside, right? As it's going up, altcoins are going flat, right? But now, as Bitcoin is nearing its all-time high, that's when they're starting to um, break out. You can start to see these pumps, right, right in here. And even in here, right, all these, you know, starting to pump out of here. But then look at Bitcoin. Look how big its pump is, right? It's huge compared to that. Um, so as far as percent percentage terms go, because that's all it's all about measuring percentages, right? What what is going to favor you uh, financially better than anything else? Um, well, for me, it's not Bitcoin, right? If you want to play it safe and super conservative, like, you know, guys like Benjamin Cohen, well, I highly respect, re respected guy, um, and he's playing his game. Um, altcoins, I think, are in a better position, right? And he might be right. If Bitcoin breaks out, they might leave some alts in the dust. But that's going to be short-lived, um, and we don't know how long or short that it's going to be. But for me, I want to be planted in the alts before that happens instead of chasing it, right? So, um, but yeah, that's, uh, everybody's strategy is different and, and his strategy works for him. My strategy works for me. It's all about what works for you. So if Bitcoin, like I said, if Bitcoin breaks out, then we have nothing to worry about as far as altcoins, um, getting into the retracement levels, right? If Bitcoin pulls back, and then breaks out, then same thing, right? Alts are going to have a little pullback, but the main goal for alts is to get to their retracement levels, just like Bitcoin has already surpassed its retracement levels. It's going to be a lot easier for the alts to get through their retracement levels because the conviction's already going to be there because Bitcoin got through its retracement levels. So now, um, let's talk about if Bitcoin does not break out, into a new all-time high. Let's say that Bitcoin starts doing this, like this, like it starts going sideways in a range similar to this range down in here, right? If it starts doing that, then to me, that's either accumulation and we're going to break out or it's distribution and we're going to break down and then go into reaccumulation and then go break out into a new all-time high another day. Right. Which would be then what a big cup and handle something like that. Right. So let's talk about that scenario. So if that scenario occurred and we were going uh, sideways for a bit in distribution, I still think that alts during that sort of sideways action is when uh, altcoins sort of um, really have their euphoric moments. So let me take off Q and T and just put on uh, theta here. Right here, let me take everything off. So let me draw it real quick. So you have a sideways, right? Getting ready for distribution. Or I'm getting ready for reaccumulation and then go. But before that happens, before that happens, right? And we're in this range in here. That's when, and you've probably heard me say this many times, but that's when we have one, two, right? And now we're in three. Let's say uh, Bitcoin pulls back, we pull back, but then it oscillates back to the upside. So it's about oscillating up, oscillating down, oscillating up, oscillating down. It's Bitcoin's not going like this uh, on a rampage. It's just oscillating in distribution. That's what you want for alts to start to take off because then the attention, right? People on Wall Street, people all over the world, the institutions, they're looking at Bitcoin, right? Because it's in the news. You know, Bitcoin nears all time high. It, all the a focus, the attention on, is on Bitcoin. But if Bitcoin starts to be boring for a little bit, because remember, people are not used to a $60,000 Bitcoin. They're not used to it. It's all psychological, right? But if Bitcoin is at 60000 for a couple weeks, then people start to get used to it, right? And then what do they do? They go, okay, now Bitcoin's boring. So now I'm going to take my profits 
from Bitcoin because Bitcoin's not moving up anymore. It's just going sideways. I don't like that. So I'm going to take some of my profits from Bitcoin because people aren't paying attention to it anymore. And I'm going to put it in things that uh, that might be a little more interesting and more rewarding later on, like the altcoins. So then as Bitcoin goes sideways, they throw their money in the alts, which they're already starting to do now. And that's when you get these big pumps to the upside, right? So as Bitcoin oscillates down, right, we have a little pullback. But as it oscillates up, we have these bigger swings to the upside, right? Oscillating back down, pull back. Oscillating back up, continue to pump, right? All while Bitcoin is going uh, essentially sideways, theta catches up. And you say, yeah, that's impossible. How can that possibly happen? Well, look at this. Here's a perfect example of what I'm about to show you. So look at this. And maybe you've seen it already. But look, Bitcoin is going up, right? What is theta doing? It's going flat. It's going sideways, right? So look what happens when Bitcoin gets to the top right here. You could see the range right there. And what it, what is that? That's distribution. So it's going up or it's going down, up, down, up, down, up, right? It's oscillating back and forth. That's what is needed to get this huge pump to the upside, right? And the big, big breakout occurred right here. So this is, so uh, March, uh, I'd say February, March. And look at that. Look at that, March. We're, guess what? We're, we're in March now, right? So think about that for a minute. Look at this. March was the, was the big moment that had happened where we broke out of theta. And March is when Bitcoin started to go sideways. So is that going to happen this March? It could be, right? I would rather the alt sort of not do that and Bitcoin break out into a new all-time high buy us a couple more, maybe another month or two, right? And then Bitcoin can go sideways and then the alts can catch up. But the difference is then we know for sure, well, we can't know for sure, but we will have a better probability of altcoins breaking out into a new all-time high, drastically increasing the size of your portfolio, right? You're looking at your portfolio, you're hitting that refresh button. I recommend not doing that. I recommend not even looking at it. Just Focus on what is happening currently with the price or don't even think about it at all until Bitcoin has that big breakout, then uh, do it. But if you're like me, you want to be active, you want to be proactive, right? But you'd also want to stay rational and not make any hasty, quick decisions, right? Always have a plan. So if Bitcoin does this, my plan is this. If Bitcoin does this and then the alts do this, my plan is this. But the best plan in the world you can have is what? HODL. Just HODL. Don't worry about it. So, so going back to my example here, Bitcoin's going all the way up, 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 up. As it starts to go sideways, now Bitcoin is done. The bull market is over, right? But look at Theta. For Theta, it has just begun. And look at this. It's going down. Bitcoin's going up, right? It's going down. Bitcoin's going up, right? So all of these, I'm sorry, theta or Bitcoin's going down, theta's going up. So you have this oscillation back and forth as theta is going up. So look at the divergence here, right? You can see we're kind of flat. Bitcoin's going up. But now Bitcoin's flat. Now alts are going up. So now we fast forward to today. What do we what could we see that's happening here? We can potentially see the same thing, right? So for me, I would rather have Bitcoin do something like this, pull back a little bit, then break out, or even like a handle, a little handle, then break out, um, or even just flag out and break out. The point is you want the breakout of the all-time high. If that occurs, then yes, the Bitcoin, the alt-Bitcoin pairs like Theta versus BTC, ETH versus BTC, they might not do so well, but that's okay because eventually it will do that. It will balance itself out. 
So you can position yourself according to that, right? If Bitcoin's going to break out into an all-time high, but what if we're wrong? What if Bitcoin? What if Bitcoin goes sideways, and it's done, and then the alts catch up, just like happened over here? You could say, yeah, but Bitcoin was in a bull market here. Well, yeah, exactly. But this is a retracement. It's the same thing. It's just the difference is a bull run versus a retracement. And by the way, I don't even call it a retracement anymore because we're already near the all-time high. So we, we have basically a triple top here. And I don't like double tops, triple tops, whatever, because they're meant to be broken. So if I put a line here, boom, boom and boom right there. So those two are the these these lines right here, right? You can see Bitcoin tried to break it once, couldn't do it. Try to break it again, couldn't do it. Came all the way, made a huge cup, right? And it looks like a reverse cup and handle, right? And that I I I think that's um pretty rare. So, you know, we're, like we're knocking on the door, knocking on the door, you come all the way up, you hit it again. So if we do something like this, now check this out. Let me take everything off the screen. What if we develop this here? Let me take off theta. Look, look at this in five, four, three, two, one. Look at this. A, what if this is a shoulder? This is a head, and then we get another shoulder. That, my friends, is going to be a massive inverse head and shoulders so what is the measured move on that well for that i will go to regular and i will put that there and then let me put this i'm going to put it right in the middle of these candles here i'm going to put it all the way up to the top of that and then i will take this and put it right here and that my friends is a target of one hundred and eleven thousand. $289. That is uh, not too bad. So if I take the percentage, what is that move? So I go all the way up. That's only, guys, that's only a 75% move, 80% move. Who cares? Right? So if I go back to theta, if I go back to theta, what is that? If I go up 80%, where does that take me? If I go up 80%, that's only going to get me $3.49. I mean, come on. I, I mean, what's, and if Bitcoin does hit that $111,000, then Theta is going to most likely break out into a new all time high. Now, worst case scenario, it does something like XRP and what Bitcoin did back in the day, which is a rise, crash. We have a retrace. We come down for reaccumulation, we go sideways, then we break out. I mean, even if Bitcoin breaks out into a new all-time high, that could still occur, right? Because let's say, and these are all hypothetical situations. I don't know what one is going to be, right? Um, let's say Bitcoin is breaking out into a new all-time high, then, it's, then it ends the sort of the fifth wave, right, of the fifth wave here. So we have, right, we have, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five. And, and in the fifth, we have one, two, three, four, and five. And let's say the fifth wave is done. We're back, we're at these targets up here. And then we start to go sideways in distribution. I think as Bitcoin tops out of its measured move, of its one, two, three, four, five, as it goes sideways, that's when the best chance Theta has to break out to new all-time high, if not before as Bitcoin is in a uh, ascent, right? If it doesn't and we start coming down like this, if we start going down like this and Theta, right, and Theta, and when I say Theta, I'm talking about all the coins that are like Theta, like Filecoin, uh, just a lot of them. A lot of them that look like this, where they have the range, they have the breakout. Many, many, many coins look like that, right? So if if that were to occur with Bitcoin, 
then actually let me put it on regular too because I had it on regular with Bitcoin instead of log scale. Then we can see theta have a big pump to the upside, right? Okay, so two things can happen. If Bitcoin goes sideways in distribution, when it hits its $111,000 target in its fifth wave of its fifth wave, right? And then it starts to go sideways, depends on where theta is. If it's already here and it goes sideways, then yeah, we have a good chance of breaking out. But if it's here and Bitcoin's gone sideways already and then it starts to break down, then I can see theta also breaking down, then going sideways, then breaking out, which would be, I'm not saying it's got to be that long and that big, but you know, we have to be prepared for any option versus something like QNT. Now it doesn't matter, right? QNT, right, is over here already. So it has a better chance of breaking out. But theta has much more percentage potential than QNT could ever have. Right? So this is where your decision has to come into a factor. And that's where the fundamental, why am I fundamentally holding theta? What, what is the future of theta, right? Um, I think Bix Weir had somebody on his channel, and I'm not uh, supporting this, but uh, he had, a I think, a psychic? The world's best psychic. I think her name is White Dove, Michelle White Dove. So she's a psychic, right? And this goes against everything that, for me as an analyst, as a technical analyst, but I do believe in higher realms of consciousness and, and things like that. I don't know how the psychics work. I don't know if they're frauds or phonies or tricks or I don't know, but basically she's the best there is or so that they've said. Uh, so you got to give her some credit, right? And she's saying a thousand dollar theta. This is not me saying it. I, this is Bix Weir, uh, Michelle White Dove, and I think a few others that are in the Bix camp um, saying a thousand dollar theta. Uh, I don't know what Cliff High says on that, but if it's going to a thousand dollars, then you guys are going to be multi millionaires. Um, so you know that would be amazing to see. And just for fun. Let me put the Fibonacci on here, and I'm going to see if that makes sense. Um, and yes, it is going to be another long video, but hey, that's how we do it. So uh, if I go to it's it, it, the highest Fibonacci on linear scale is uh, mid 60s, right? So I'm going to change this to log scale and log scale does make sense because uh, they respect the log scale targets more in the third wave, especially when you have an asset like theta. So a log scale target, uh, what did I say? $1,000. Okay, so $1,000 would put us between the 2.272 and the 2.618. So we'll just say 2.272. So right there. So I think, um, you know, if, if it's going to hit that, uh, I don't even know what the market cap would be on that, but essentially that would be um, about 45,000, 48,000% to the upside. So that is huge. That is mega, mega, mega. That's like a, what is that? Like a, almost a 500X, uh, thereabouts, 500X. So do I think that's going to happen? I'm, I don't think that's uh, going to happen, uh, at least not anytime soon. Now, I do think eventually it could hit that number, right, when theta is well implemented. And, you know, because theta is a utility driven asset, right? And theta fuel is also. So once the, you, you know, like Brad Garlinghouse says, the CEO of Ripple, utility will drive this market. Utility will win. And you have to decide which coins have the best utility, right? And that's where it comes into play. So no matter 
what percentage you come up with or where it is on the phases or if it's breaking out or if it's above the bull market support band or if it's at the 702 or if it's consolidated. None of that matters if you don't have conviction in the utility for a long-term hodling position. So let's say you're 30 years old or 40 years old or even 20 years old or whatever. How long are you willing to hold? 10 years, 20 years, right? For me, I'm trying to hold, um, you know, I, I want to hold forever, right? Obviously taking profits along the way, but for me, I want to, uh, well, make sure that uh, when I pass away that my family will have, um, you know, I'll have something to show for when I'm gone, in other words, right? Think of it like uh, another life insurance policy, right? Or sending your kids to school or whatever it is that you want, right? And the best thing is don't be greedy for yourself. Um, your family, right, is uh, the priority. If you're a single gal or single guy and you don't have a lot of family, then uh, I, was, I was at that point in, in my life. And some people don't want family. Some people want to be a bachelor. And I totally respect that. But just be careful because when you start coming into wealth and you're a bachelor, people want to be your friends that were never your friends before, right? So you got to be on high alert, especially, you know, I've seen, seen it happen to quite a few people where people come into money, right? And uh they, they 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 feel good about themselves and then they attract the wrong people rather it be a woman right that wants to take advantage of somebody who comes into money right or um and some guys don't even mind right they say yeah the only reason um she likes me right is because i have this money and i don't care i like that i like the attention and i i get it i totally get it but just be careful because there's a lot of snakes out there that will pretend to be your friend but uh in reality they're just there because you drove up in a brand new porsche or you know whatever so just my two cents of advice um and if you have a family if you're a family man then you don't have to you have to worry about it that's why i'd rather just I like being settled down, so I don't have to worry about um, chasing and 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 you know living that lifestyle. Um, uh, I mean, there was a time and a place for that, and that's sort of when you're in your twenties. But I think once you get in your thirties, you know, you start wanting to get more. You know, you want to pass down your generation, and for me, that's having kids, right? Because I look at it this way. When I'm 80 years old, who's going to be there, right? If I don't have kids, who's going to be there? Uh, or if I'm in my 70s, I don't want to die alone in a nursing home or, or, or whatever. It doesn't matter how much money you have, right? Because at that point, you get used to it, right? Um, Mark Cuban has the same problems you do, has the same problems I do, right? So... Yes, when you win the lottery, you feel amazing the first year, the second year, the third year, even five, ten years. But eventually, you get used to the fact that you have the money, and then your lifestyle adjusts according to your new financial being. And then what happens is you sort of get used to that fact, and then your problems that you had before you were rich start to come back to you, right? Whatever problems you have, a lot of people have you know, depression, anxiety, stress, uh, loneliness, you know, because, you know, when you grow up in a situation where everybody's looking at a screen, nobody wants to talk to each other anymore. I mean, I was watching a video of the new iPhone thing that is like a, is there like goggles, right? So you basically totally disconnect yourself from the real world. Uh, for me, I, I grew up in the 90s, so I, I had the pleasure of actually going outside and playing with other kids, right? Um, but then as you get to an adult, I mean, many people are just sort of 
addicted to their screen. I mean, I'm one of them. I'm on my phone a lot. I'm on the computer a lot. Um, most of it's work related, but I do have a social life. And sometimes you got to put it down and go call your dad or call your grandma, or call your cousin or call somebody, you know, because uh, one day they might not be there and then you're going to take it for granted. So uh, just my two cents, because like with crypto, you want to always look to the future. Don't think about today. Don't even think about tomorrow. Think about the next several years of what your goals are, right? Um, and for me, when I was, uh, I met my wife when I was 21. I was working at a college as a custodian, um, cleaning windows and toilets and mopping floors and stripping and waxing floors and cleaning desks. And that college happened to be uh, a vocational school. So it was a bunch of nurses and pharmacy techs and dental and and predominantly that space was women. So I was like, you know, I had I, I had a, a a good opportunity, so to, quote unquote, to say. And uh, there was only one woman that caught my eye, only one, and that was my wife. And I think a couple of years later, uh, I asked her to marry me. We had a kid, and now, boom. I'm settled down and I don't look back and wish I, I could have done this. I could have done that. Yes, of course you want to do those things. But at the end of the day, for me, what's more important is not yesterday, but when you settle down, when I'm 60, 70, 80 years old, you're going to want to have somebody to talk to, right? I mean, hopefully your wife or your husband is still there, but more importantly, your kids, Right. And a lot of times it's sad, but a lot of times kids don't even call their parents. Right. So hopefully that's not going to be my situation. But I digress. Uh, I think I'll wrap it up there. So, yeah, don't. This is a crypto channel, Brandon. This is not a this is not a, a, a help center. This is a crypto channel. Stay the lane. Stay the lane. OK. No, but seriously, uh, I think data is on its way into its retracement level. Let's see what Bitcoin decides to do as far as Q and T. Um, I'm really liking the pattern that I see. And then also from an Elliott way perspective, I didn't even get into this. So we have a one, two, and I think we're in that wave three. And inside wave three, we have a one, two. And the two is sort of this long methodical correction. So I really think this wave three is going to pop pretty nicely. Um, so I think that's about it for me. I really wanted to talk about QNT. So the meme coins. Wow. Uh, let me get to a meme coin here. The only meme coin I was looking at really was SHIB and Pepe. And Pepe looks like it wants to break out into a new all-time high. If you remember, I can't remember the last time I did a Pepe video. Um, it was one of the rapid fire. I think it was the first rapid fire. Basically saying like this is a beautiful inverse uh, head and shoulders. Almost too perfect. Almost too perfect, right? So you have this, uh, you have this uh, measured move here, right? And we are getting pretty close to that measured move. So, uh, you know, if you're trading, maybe consider taking a little bit of profits. Now, if I pull on the Fibonacci, trend-based Fibonacci, and I go from here all the way back to the top, all the way back to the bottom of that correction, you can see we're, we are also nearing that 1.618. So we're getting close to a sort of a, t a profit taking area, not to say that it can't rampage, right? Because sometimes meme coins can just explode and like any coin and it can just blow away um, targets, right? For me, I, I like Pepe since because it's so small, right? It, it doesn't have a lot of overhead resistance. Um, we only have one wave, right? So we have wave one, we have a three-way pullback. And so this is be wave one, two, and now we're in three, four, and maybe five, right? 
So, uh, so that would be a one, a one, two, three, and then four, and then five, something like that, right? Um, uh, I'm going to talk about XRP. If you look at XRP ETH, it's already at the bottom of the barrel as far as being XRP ETH. Look at this. And what do we call that? Well, to me, this looks like Wyckoff accumulation. And we just entered the spring phase, my friend, or ended the spring phase. And I'm going to talk, I'm not going to talk about that now. But basically, you have this boom, boom, boom. And now we're going into the spring, right? You take out this, all of this here, all of this support, you take it out and you grab that liquidity. And what happens? You go like this and then you go to the moon, right? So remember, um, picture theta, right? Theta was right in here. That was when the first time I was making my videos. Then it came back up. The bull market support band came like this, right? Then the price came back up. It back tested the bull market support band. Then it continued higher. So just think about where it is, right? I, I know a lot of people say, oh, yeah, why would I be in XRP? It looks terrible. Well, yeah, that's when you want to buy it, when it looks terrible. I mean, look at this. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have five waves to the downside. Okay, I got to stop talking about it because then I won't have anything to talk about next video. No, I think I will. Uh, I got a lot to say. Um, so I don't. I I kind of want to do some more assets. Um, Hex looks like an inverse head and shoulders. That looks like it wants to break out. Also has this cup and handle look, and it also has this uh sort of ascending triangle look to it so maybe we pull back and uh pull back here and then continue to go up uh look at fetch.ai it is broken out into a new all-time high look at this we had a one two three four five right and then we pulled back a b c Right. But I want to show you something on fetch. Look at this. Look at this. And this is what I think Theta could also do. Right. And a lot of others. Look at this. We had a rise. We had a crash. We had a retrace. And then we came down for reaccumulation. Then we went sideways and then we broke out. This is another this is a basically a live example of what I've been saying um, that usually assets do that. Right. So. Look at this, fetch.ai, right? We go up, we have a rise, crash, retrace, reaccumulation, sideways, and now we're breaking out. I didn't get to catch that one. Um, I missed it. Um, so, but anyway, look, uh, we're coming up on a one, two, and then we have a one, two, three, four, five, right? So one, two, three, and then maybe we get four or five. So then this whole thing turns into a one, two, and then a three. So uh, it can go a lot, lot, a lot higher. Uh, we'll see. It's nice to see Flare is making a recovery. Um, I was part of that airdrop. And yeah, usually airdrops just totally dump. So I just hang on to it and don't worry about it. Phantom also looks like it, it, it wants to... Uh, uh, break out of here. I mean, a lot of coins do. A lot of coins look like they want to do that. Uh, Kava. Definitely at the bottom here. Um, kind of looks like fetch in a way, but it doesn't have that retracement. So one, two, three, four, five, come back down. It has that retracement. Then it goes like this, and then it goes like that. So... So this is the last one I want to talk about is SHIB. So SHIB, um, uh, I basically discovered this Wyckoff accumulation in here, right here. So boom, boom, boom. And this was the spring. This was the liquidity gap and let's go. But that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Instead, it was more of a drawn out where we had this one, two, one, two, right? It's very bullish. We had this one, two, one, two, and that one, two, one, two landed on the bull market support band, also creating a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder, also back testing the bull market support band, but then also starting to break out of its um, range in here. So, dang, I missed that one. Uh, I had 
a little bit, but man, I should have took a serious position. That's sort of the downside of, you know, not necessarily making videos, but, you know, going down that road. Um, I kind of miss things that instead of, you know, doing a video more sort of paying attention to what things are doing. Um, but I'm fine where I'm at, uh, shoulda, woulda, coulda. So at the end of the day, you, you gotta, you gotta capitalize on what you have and what you want. So yeah, a lot of coins look like they're starting to break out of their range, right? And that's something we've been talking about, um, uh, what, for the last three months, right? That eventually um, these assets are going to break out of their range and go into their retracement levels. So for SHIB, um, it just passed its 382, right? And this is the market cap of SHIB, by the way, not the price. So looking for, uh, actually, let me, is this on log scale? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so yeah, it's nowhere near its 382. Um, you still have quite a bit of ways to go and not just SHIB, but if you look at, uh, what's total two, total two is in its retracement as well. Um, Uniswap, right? So like Uniswap, Uniswap already broke out of its range, right? So it broke out of its range, kind of like Theta. So for me, I'm looking for coins that haven't broke out yet, Right? Obviously, I'm staying in the ones that I already have, but I want, I'm looking for coins that haven't broke out of their range yet. And uh, one of them is QNT. Um, ZRX. Uh, ZRX is one, two, that hasn't necessarily broken out. It's got, it's back tested its uh, bull market support, man. So it'll, it should be interesting to see if this thing can uh, start ripping as well. You can see DOT already um, is starting to break out, but also it back tested its bull market support band. So if you see any assets that have this breakout and this back test, and that they're right here around their bull market support band, and they haven't broken out of their range yet, then let me know in the comment section and I'll take a look at it because that's sort of the assets I'm interested in at the moment. Um, this is kind of a new coin, Cyber. Very difficult to read. I have no idea. It just, you have this pump and you're sort of just sort of cruising on up. It looks pretty bullish. It looks like it wants to rip to the upside. But again, there's no, you know, if, if you get it, it's, it's sort of taking a, a, a gamble here on it. Um, kind of looks like uh, uh, an ascending triangle here. So if I put this on here, ascending triangle, yeah, looks like an ascending triangle that has broken out. So, I mean, basically you're going to get to a point potentially where you just take a dart and you throw it at the wall and whatever altcoin hits, I mean, you can make money off of it. Some are going to do better than others. Um, it's just about waiting and, and seeing. I mean, look at this coin. And that's a, the, the danger of, of getting one that's really low is it might not ever recover, right? So this had a diag, one, two, three, four, five. Had this pullback here. Um, it's currently below its bull market support band. I don't know much about this coin. Uh, I don't remember why I added it to my list. Bitcoin. It's still looking good, 62K. Let's look Let's look at the short term of Bitcoin. Yeah, it looks good. It looks like an ascending triangle maybe. Probably some type of fourth wave. Um, so one of the things, I, the way I countered it was like this. One, two, three, four, five, it's done. But it's probably not. It's pro I don't... I wouldn't call this a fourth wave. I would say one, two, all of this is three, four, and now we're getting five. So that fifth wave could be an extended fifth, 
right? And I'm going to end it there. And the next video I'm going to talk about is all of this in here. And I'm going to talk about um, Bitcoin, the short term. Uh, I'm also going to talk about uh, the alt pairs, right? So like Theta versus BTC, maybe XRP versus BTC or XRP versus ETH uh, and talk about that. So I'm going to wrap it there. Sorry, the video went long, just sort of trying to get the information out. Um, I'm going to work on trying to get things more organized because for me, I don't have uh, you know, like a teleprompter telling me what to say or, or notes or anything. I sort of just freestyle and I just say what I say. Um, so, uh, I think I'll get better over time, but for me, I'm more of getting a lot of the part of this video was getting my mindset and, and talking about sort of how I go about seeing things, uh, as far as percentages and seeing where they are and trying to capitalize on what makes more sense based off where we are. So hopefully that did the trick for now, but I'll wrap it up here and I'm gonna get into the next video either today or tomorrow. I'll see what is in store, but appreciate guys for watching this video. If you can, it'd be awesome if you can leave a like and a subscribe and I would really appreciate a comment as well. And uh, yeah, if you have any alts you want me to take a look at drop them in the comment section and i can uh take a look so i uh, appreciate you guys and i'll catch you on the next one cheers